What's going on everyone? CJ back here with a brand new episode of the SFL. That is right, the Smalls Football League. Welcome, welcome. Week four, season number two here of the SFL. And we finally got our first win last week against the San Diego Aviators and five subscriber players looking to get back to 500 today as we take on two more subscribers and the Anchorage Snowhawks. Never played them yet in this series, so super excited to dive in and see what they uh, see what kind of challenge they're going to present us with today. And speaking of subscribers, we got another subscriber that just joined the SFL this week. Got a lot to get into today. Cue the intro, man. Quarterback of the Anchorage Snowhawks is Matthew Stafford, and funny enough, this team used to be the Lions in the NFC North before I relocated everyone, so Matthew Stafford staying on the original team before relocation, also Trey Lance behind him, but getting a look at our first subscriber player that we are going to be taking on on the Snowhawks team, we got Mr. Justin Shepard here, 5'9", 225 pound, the Michigan Wolverine, power back, and you get a look at these uh, kind of Derrick Henry-esque type of stats here. We got the 93 break tackle, really 94, but he's playing down to it to uh, combo that 88 speed, that 88 acceleration, that 90 trucking. I got a feeling that our DBs are going to be feeling it in the morning, having to go up against Mr. Shepard today. And from what I've seen in the stats, too, I think that he's uh, playing pretty good, putting together a pretty good season. We got uh, Morris Rogers, rookie out of Iowa State, Tyler Goodson, Three-year pro out of Iowa, John Lovett here is the fullback. But this is what I am probably most concerned with, taking on Jay Jettas. 99 overall, arguably the best wide receiver in the league. They got him. They got D-Hop, who even though he's older, he's nothing to scoff at. They got Alan Lazard, also out of Iowa State as well. So, the, But the combination of Jay Jettas and D-Hop, Man, oh man, another Iowa player. Lots of Iowa and uh, Iowa State players on this team. We got and George Kittle. I mean, come on. They got some weapons that we're going to have to worry about today. Andrew Thomas is the left tackle, so we know he's very good. Steve Avila, okay option there at the left guard position. Rookie, auto-generated guy, not a subscriber. I mean, I don't think <laughs> he's not. Huh? Dylan Spencer looks to be a pretty good center for being in his rookie year. Kevin Dotson, always a reasonable option there at right guard. And also Ryan Ramchek, longtime vet, been doing it at a high level at the right tackle position. Defensive line, we got Folo Fadakasi, pretty good player. Not the best, but, you know, decent. Same with Sam Williams, so not, uh, not too scared of their defensive line, even though our offensive line can't seem to block worth a gosh dang this season. B.J. Hill and Jaqueline Charles, rookie out of Florida, are the D-tackles. Joe Tryon, Shoyinka, left linebacker. So their defense, I mean, Jerome Baker, pretty good. Ohio State Buckeye, David Collins, pretty good. I mean, their defense doesn't concern me too much, but the DBs, different story. J.C. Horn, very good player. And our second subscriber player on this team, Mason Smith. Shout out at Masatonic down there in the comments. 6'2", 197, man-to-man -man out of Michigan Ooh. State. And he's got blazing speed at 97, 90, 96 acceleration, 93 agility, 93 jumping, and some pretty decent man coverage. Not the best in zone, but pretty decent man coverage. So he may be a problem for us today. And then, of course, Brian Cook is the free safety and uh, Rayshon Jenkins. So aside from their DBs, Graham Gano, pretty good kicker, whatever, Scottish Hammer, Pretty good punter, whatever. But aside from their DBs, you know, their defense really isn't anything too crazy, but those offensive weapons really, really scare me. And as I mentioned, got a new subscriber player joining the Aviators who now have six subscribers on their team. That is absolutely ridiculous. Them, the Oilers, and there's another team too, I can't remember, that's got a ton of subscribers. It'll, it'll come to me. But we're up to 52 subscribers in the SFL, guys. I know the Madden 24 cycle's pretty much dead, but stay on board. Madden 25, I'm going to do something crazy with this SFL series, assuming that the relocation and everything is similar to that of college football 25. Hold on to your freaking britches because it is going to be a good time. But we got uh, Mr. Daniel THG here. Shout out Daniel 330 S3G in the comments. 330, also from Ohio State. Daniel, not sure if you're 
from the 330 here in Ohio. But if you are, fellow Akron, Ohio, born and raised, let me know down there in the comments. But you see the 330 on my name as well. So hopefully my man's repping the 330 just like me. But 6'5", 200 pounds, great size for a wide receiver. He's our, their new slot guy, 83 slot, playing behind Mike Evans and Cortland Sutton. And look at that blazing 98 speed. Also, some really good catch attributes as well. Really good in the short route, as uh, you know, a lot of slot guys are. And that 92 agility. So, Daniel here, I mean, I don't think we're going to play. Well, we could play the Aviators again in the playoffs. Right now, they're 1-2. and two, We're 1-2. and two. And also, the team that we're taking on today, the Anchorage Snowhawks, they are 1-2 and two as well. So, we're really early on in the season. But if we do have to play the Aviators again... In the playoffs, going to be squaring off against lots of subscribers there. But it is game time, guys. One and two Snowhawks coming down to Thunderbirds Field. We are one and two as well. And if you guys are fired up for this SFL series and you're loving the content, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. 1,000 subscribers, guys. Help me get there. And I'm going to give away an NFL jersey. All you got to do is click that button. It is absolutely free. And if you're watching this video, you might as well subscribe, especially if you like madden and or football content so please help me get there appreciate you guys and without further ado let's get on down to thunderbirds field see if we can get to 500 and get ready for the game t-birds offense gonna get the ball first and boy it was an offensive uh slugfest in that last game against the aviators hopefully our defense can play a little bit better and speaking of defense we're gonna have to watch mason smith subscriber and jc horn and the boys but here comes the NFL's new highest paid man in real life. Jordan Love just got that four year, $220 million contract. I'm sure he don't know how to act and it's going to be very interesting to see Jordan Love. I am a huge fan, as you guys know. But right now, all I care about is how Jordan Love performs in this one. So we're going to start out shotgun here. Got to Olave on little drag route and i think that's actually the move olave's wide open okay gotta get this man involved he's still go he fumbled no 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 i was going to itch my eyeball what happened chris oh dude i think that's clean too i was just about to say oh man that thing got that thing got punched out there by jerome baker the linebacker and I was just about to say we got to get Chris Olave involved because he only had one catch last week. And if you keep making plays like that, Chris, you might only have one catch this week as well. What a disastrous start. There's Matt Stafford. There's his stats. Who the frick cares? Okay, well, that's not what I was anticipating happening on the first drive. I got to be honest. Stafford coming out shotgun. Got a little bunch to his left. And there is the running back, Shepard, shrugging tons of tacklers aside. We talked about that break tackle that he had in his stats. We know he can do that. And last week, looks like he had a pretty good game, finding pay dirt, picking up 75 yards. And we've had trouble stopping uh, rushers as of late, stopping the running game. Hasn't really worked too well to our advantage. And Mr. Shepard here, he may be in store for a clinic with our kind of suspect defense. I mean, Shepard, he's just shrugging people aside like ragdolls. Two rushes for 12 yards on two powerful, powerful runs to open this one up. Okay, so Snowhawks are moving here. Justin Shepard has been the recipient of both handoffs so far in this one. And now Stafford going to go through the air, and it's an off-target pass. He was looking for Jay Jettas. We got to watch... I said that uh, combination there could be very lethal. Could you imagine Matthew Stafford having Justin Jefferson on some of those uh, Detroit Lions teams, man? That would, I mean, they were already, I know they weren't good like record wise, but as far as personnel wise, they were great. And that's going to be a catch by tight end George Kittle, but for no gain. And we do got the Snowhawks in a third and 10 now. All right, guys, come on. Got to go ahead and get these Snowhawks off of the field. We're guessing pass. We're shading. Bruh. And, oh, God, there we go. There we go. That's Parker Newberry, the rookie out of North Carolina. Not even Jay Jettas. But we had the Snowhawks in a third down situation. And what does Stafford do? He slings the rock for a big, big pickup of 22 yards. About the last thing that we could have had happen. And I still can't get that Chris Olave fumble out of my head, man. That is just, that was, that was going to be a good drive. That was a good pass. And that should be a hold, I think. 
It was caught by Ian Thomas, the tight end. But that one should be coming back, and it will. First, first thing that's gone right for us this game. Thank you, Kevin Dotson. Following the uh, holding penalty, Snowhawks are still behind the stick, so that's good. Need to get some pressure with Jay Mongstro, Silas Vaden, and the boys. That, speaking of which, number 91 and number 99, Mongstro and Vaden were there to meet Shepard for just a minimal gain or maybe even a loss. All right, this is our chance, boys. We're guessing pass. We're shading inside. I'm going to have Leonard Floyd drop back in coverage because you never know. And that's going to be a sack from Miles Garrett. Somebody else was in there as well, but Miles Garrett was the first one to get to him and we need him to come alive just like he did in the playoffs for us he was such a key contributor and this is not going to be an easy kick from Graham Gano he's got the leg we know that Graham Gano very good kicker been doing it for a long time but this one will not be an easy one and oh almost a block kick there got the animation Snowhawks do send it through the uprights but a little damage control by us following that fumble allowing three much better than allowing six our little inside zone here with Kareem Hunt. Got the running game going last week for the first time in quite a while. And Kareem, look at the burst and the change of direction. Dagger play, slash in the defense. Good hole opened up there, and Kareem Hunt fortunately did have the vision to cut back and find very, very good yardage. And let's continue to stay on the ground here. Like I said, uh, what worked last week was, what did we do last week that worked so well? We double teamed one of the nose tackles, I know that much, so maybe that will work for us again. Tubby, I mean, that's a gain of about eight. Gain of eight exactly. Would love to get this running game started early here. I mean, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? Let's go back to uh, Tubby again here, see if he can find some blocks. The blocking is looking really great in this one. A couple of power backs going at it. Tubby McDouble on the T-Birds, Justin Shepard on the Snowhawks, both kind of the same player. I would say Shepard maybe uh, has a little bit more speed than Tubby, but we know Tubby can get it going when Tubby wants to get it going, and hopefully we will have the McDoubles raining down on the screen today. Let's go RPO game to Oxmall. I shouldn't have thrown that. I Yeah. Actually, pass breakup, not the worst thing in the world there. And I think here that we go uh, play action. I'm going to go ahead and shift the line over to the right, and I'm probably looking for St. James on this one, but possibly... Kareem Hunt as well. We are in field goal range. So, oh, St. James has got it. Bang! And St. James, he might score. He does! Yes! Shout out at Neverland Productions in the comments. Such a big pickup in the offseason. St. James, he was being way underutilized on the San Juan Tigers. And that may be, I think it's his first touchdown with us. And maybe even in the SFL series. If not, he's maybe only got a couple. But love to see that connection between the NFL's highest paid man. I know this is the SFL. Finding the tight end St. James. And how about that? I got to remember we are not in uh, college football 25 here. So <laughs> playing these games back to back and alternating series is really has me screwed up on the kicking. But we jump out to an early lead 7-3. And hopefully our defense can... Do what they did on that last drive with the sack and a couple big, big plays. Motor City Dan Campbell looking on there on the sideline. As I mentioned, this is uh, formerly the Detroit Lions. So Stafford never got a chance to play with Dan Campbell. But in this SFL series, he is. And uh, that's another catch there. That's Jay Jettas. First time we called his name, thinking that it's probably not going to be the last. <laughs> then in pressure again although i want jacks vaden to man up on george kittle and oh my god who's playing coverage out there parker newberry the rookie auto-generated guy second time we called his name in this one and both i believe for pretty monstrous gains and just like that on one pass the snowhawks are able to get it into thunderbirds territory haven't seen uh justin shepherd here for a while so see if Stafford goes to him we're gonna pinch the line it is gonna be a Shepard run he's got good change of direction damage control again able to limit him to five come out zone audible into pressure I like to do that just because I feel like you kind of fool the Madden AI I don't even know if that's true but I'm gonna do it anyways and it's Matt Milano how clutch has this guy been man oh my god ever since he he did not play all last season he came back in the playoffs and all he did was make play after play after play. 
It's a sack, strip, fumble. Justin Shepard heads up play to recover that fumble. But man, Matt Milano has been an absolute weapon. Chris Olave saying, hey, I'm not the only one that fumbled today. Yeah, I'm sure, right? Lucky for you, somebody else did. But it's third and 22. Surely we can get these boys off of the field. It's a screen pass. Do not let them pick this up. Do not let them pick this up. No. Oh my God, they did. A little screen pass to Park. Who in the hell is this Parker Newberry guy? I am about sick of calling his name. And how in the world do we let that happen on a screen pass? Utterly, utterly inexcusable. Uh, there's just no excuse for that, man. There's no excuse for that. Bang! It's Miles Garrett. Second sack, or they say 1.5. Three sacks total on the day. Defenses having some lapses, but also recovering from them. That's going to take us to the end of the first. 7-3, passing yards, pretty close to being even. I mean, we are outgaining them on both passing and rushing, but it's still early, and the Snowhawks are driving here, but a monstrous sack there from Miles Garrett now has them behind the chains, behind the sticks. We had them behind the sticks already, and we see, obviously, didn't matter because Stafford has some clutch third down conversions here, but where will he go on second and 20? Justin Jefferson picking up nine, getting most of that yardage back from the sack. Come on, guys. This is it right here. I need pressure. It's third and 11. Can we do it? Can we force him to another field goal? Stafford is looking. He's got nobody in that. There's no way that's like an illegal contact or something. It can't be. Who's getting fired today? Silas Vaden, don't worry, brother. Your job is safe. Luckily, you're subscribed to this channel, or you may be in the doghouse, brother. Oh, yeah, our defense is just, it's its strange, you know, because it's like we're making good plays, getting sacks and stuff like that, but then we give the yardage back on just other boneheaded plays, and oh, man, that was almost a pick for Matt Milano. It was in his mitts, and that'll make it second and 10 from the 13th. More pressure here. Maybe Matt Milano can get another sack, or maybe it's going to be a handoff to Shepard. It's neither, and ooh, it's Jay Jett as well. Stafford was about this close to seeing how the turf tastes here at Thunderbirds Field. But Stafford does that. He's a dog. He knows when to get rid of the ball, and he's got one of the best in the business as a nice safety blanket there in Justin Jefferson. And just like that, the Snowhawks retake the lead 10-7 on the scoreboard. And we're going to continue to go to Tubby for really, you know, as long as they allow us to. I mean, we're not in a position where we have to pass. The run's working. I say we stick with it for as long as possible. And I mean, even that, like, that was one of our weaker runs of the game. But we still do pick up three. I got to air it out now. So it's second and seven. I'm looking uh, probably Mike Oxmall's way. And that is going to be intercepted by Jerome Baker. Okay. Well, uh, that was not the best read by me. I'll be the first to admit it. We did not throw any picks last week. We were interception free. That has kind of been our, I should say, my. My kind of bugaboo this season is I'm throwing lots of picks with love. That one was costly too, as it extends the score to 17 to seven. Come on, Coach Smalls, get your head out of your ass here. Maybe I just only run it, I don't know. But got a bit of an uphill battle to climb. I think the boys are up for the task, but still gonna be tough. Maybe a Patrick Peterson return would be nice, yeah. There's wishful thinking. Let's go play fake again. This worked earlier to St. James and hoping, well, it's Olave, but do not fumble. Matter of fact, we're just going to run out of bounds because we've already seen that man cough the football up once. We got a pick now on our resume. So the last thing we can do is afford to be committing boneheaded turnovers. So yeah, safe option. And speaking of Chris, I mean, indecent exposure, he might just be going streaking. We'll see what that safety does. If not, um, I don't like it. So check down to St. James. Actually going to get drilled backwards. But still a uh, semi-healthy gain of four. Second and six. Seven minutes to go till halftime. I really want Kareem on this Texas route. But it might just have to be Valda Scantling. I mean, that looked kind of horse collary to me, right? That was Brian Cook, the safety. Kind of drug us down by our, uh, by our, you know, back there. But... Ref didn't call it anyways, so it is what it is, but a first down was gained. And I'm kind of going through the air now. I want to pick up the tempo a little bit. Let's go play fake and maybe 
Hit Waller or possibly McDouble. Oh, it could be Waller. We need a touch pass. Great recovery there by Brian Cook, and that will make it second and 10. I mean, third and five, not the worst thing in the world, but I really want uh okay, very good. Coach is calling it. I was going to say, this is the perfect time for a split screen. So hopefully we get some good, decent enough blocking there on the outside, and we can hit Kareem Hunt, but we're not even going to get the ball out quick enough because it's Cleland Farrell on the sack. Got to bring out Jack Mavros, man. That was very unfortunate. I was a split second away from getting that ball out, but just was not able to. And boy, oh boy, this one is rough, man. We better pick up the pace. Or Oh, great punt by Jack Mavros, though. Pinning him back at the five. But we got to pick up the pace here, find a way to get this ball back, or we're at risk of going one and three. I really hate it when they get pinned back here like it's good. In theory, like you want to punt the ball and pin him back inside the five. But I've just seen so frequently, man, so frequently uh, players rip off huge gains. And right now we're also going pressure. So we got to watch the outside here. I may even have Yaya Diaby just kind of sit here. Yeah, I was about to say that is dangerous. George Kittle picking it up third and six defense needs you to make a play right now. Come on, guys. I got faith in you, but we got to make it. Got to make it happen. Cannot let the Snowhawks uh, get the ball back here. And, oh, my God, it was Marcus Peters. But Justin Jefferson is just such a weapon. And they get the ball back after halftime, too. So, <laughs> ah, man, nothing's really going right in this game, is it? I I'm, I'm not a fan of this game. Not a fan of this game at all. Not like I like the uh, Aviators game better, right? That was offensive explosion from us. And this one, man, Stafford, he's just sitting back there. The, uh, Matthew Stafford, MD, we'll call him because he's a surgeon. He's picking apart our defense. I haven't seen Shepard in a while. Curious if Stafford will go to him on this one, which he does. And Shepard has the first down. He's starting out six for 21. But this is a long, methodical drive, which is the last kind of drive that I want to see because the Snowhawks could be looking to Complete that illustrious double dip scenario, which I don't want him to. Need some pressure on Stafford. And I'm telling you, man, George Kittle breaks the tackle. This could be disastrous. Stafford is hanging in that pocket until the very, very last second. We know he can do that, but he's putting it on full display here today. We got to find a way to get the ball back and at least try, though. We saw miracles do happen. Deep Hail Mary shot to uh, Zay Jones in the last episode was a thing. And, man, these receivers are just seemingly open on every play. We're pretty much getting dog walked in this one, guys. I'm not even sure, like, what do we even do in this situation? I'm going to have Jax Vaden just kind of sit out here and spy the field, and it's Kittle again. Might as well even just let him score. No, we're not gonna. And a minute 22, I mean, if they don't punch it into the end zone on this one, we definitely will call a timeout. But I want to preserve all three of those timeouts because we got to at least get into field goal range. Because, again, they get the ball back. It's a Shepard pitch. It's a Shepard score. And we are down 24-7 to against the Anchorage Snowhawks. And, man, it's just everything just seems tough in this game. Nothing is coming easy. Part of that's on me. So I think mostly it's just on Matt Stafford being Matt Stafford. Got to find a way to engineer some points on this drive right here yeah now the screen is shaking too awesome we're gonna start out screen to tubby here i just want to pick up something positive pressure's right in my face we are gonna get it away and tubby just get out of bounds and that is gonna be a hold i just know it holding i mean what's what's a young man to do fire ryan kelly maybe that could be an option gotta hit Hopefully, like Zay Jones on this crosser, we need a big chunk play or else we are just absolutely doomed. There's Zay. Zay, get out of bounds. He almost didn't. Zay had a career game last week in the in the previous game versus the Aviators, and we're going to need him to have something similar to that again. I think we'll go screen again. Again. I know I just said again. Like, again. <laughs> Wait, what? Time's not as much as a, of a factor as you would think because we got all three timeouts. But why can't I get these screens off? Second time Cleveland Farrell did that. I'm pressing the button. I don't know what more they want from me. It's a uh, third and 19 now. Last thing we want, we got to go. Uh, we got to do something here. We got to do something here. We got to go TE attack. 
we can't let the Snowhawks get the ball back and score again. That would be absolutely tragic. And that's looking like that might be what happens unless we can maybe hit Darren Waller here on the rollout. We're going to roll out with Love. Waller is open. We do hit him. Thank you. That's why I love that play. And if nothing else, we're actually close to field goal range now with two timeouts. I am going to try the screen pass one more time. Coach is calling it. We still got two timeouts. But if I get sacked on this one, man, okay. Not going to get sacked on this one. Kareem Hunt has some good blockers. Get out of bounds, Kareem. Late hit. That's got to be a late hit. No doubt about it. Personal foul. Finally, something goes my way. Jeez, I'm crow, man. Yeah. Definitely going to accept that ball moves down to the 12. I kind of like Chris Olave straight up the middle here. He might actually be my first read. Oh, yeah, baby. It's there. What? Jordan Love, man. I realize you weren't paid a $220 million contract in this game. But, I mean, that was, that was right there. Right for the taking. And it's looking like we may have to settle for a field goal here. That's about the last thing. That I wanted to have happen, but it's looking like that's what's going to happen unless... Will this pass be accurate? Oh, Darren Waller! Oh, my God! How did he keep fighting? Whoa! Darren freaking Waller. No way sh he should have had that touchdown. I mean, look, he stopped at the five. He stopped at the five. That's Mason Smith, too. The... the Subscriber corner. Oh, man. Stopped at the five, but sheer will and determination allowed him to cross the plane. And that was just so stinking huge, man, because, you know, they're getting the ball back. And we were really at risk of having this game be out of reach. And because of Darren Waller and a couple other things that went right on that drive, we are still in it. Still down by 10. Still a lot of work left to do. Uh, Snowhawks now outpassing us, so, you know, that's Matt Stafford, MD, as I was talking about. Get a look at some games going on around the league. Tons of subscribers here. Michael Yakin, Darian Wolcott, Johnny Waters. Orbits are uh, leading the Lumberjacks, which is good for us because Austin Lumberjacks are in our division. So lots of subscribers there. And we got one on the Bulls as well, halfback Austin Kringle, who already has a touchdown in that game. And it's not even halftime. And then Redwoods leading the Voyagers. Lionel Moore there and uh, Mac Hayward highlighted on your screen. Voyagers 3-0. So Redwoods looking to pull the upset. And doesn't really matter, you know, that game for us. We beat the Voyagers last season in the Super Bowl. So I guess that, you know, got a little, little bit of a rivalry there. But we got to figure out the game plan for this second half, man. It's going to be throw it deep for us. And it's probably going to be defend either the medium. Yeah, defending the medium pass. Force Matt Stafford to throw it short. I'm okay if he does that. I just don't want to see those big, big bombs like he was, you know, throwing in the first half. Uh, because we have to get, we have to end drives. We have not been able to end drives other than that one that ended in a field goal. Defense, roll your sleeves up. Time to get to work. I haven't seen them go to the run in quite some time. We'll see if he uh, goes to Jefferson or uh, Shepard now. He's not gonna. He's just going to go to Justin Jefferson for about the 412.5th time today. Does that number make sense? No, it does not. Do I care? You guessed it. No, I do not. We have no answer. We got to pretty much just always have a man watching Jefferson. It's a pitch play to Shepard, and we're there to meet him. And it's a fumble. Can we scoop it up? I think that we did. Antoine Winfield. Who jarred that thing free? Justin, if you're watching, brother... Was this thing clean? He was fighting. I, yeah, he had his knee down. Oh, boy, you just dodged a bullet. That one's going to get a booth review. I already know it. Yeah. Anytime you get a booth review in Madden on a fumble, Previous it literally always review. gets returned. There you see that knee. Oh, man. I thought that was our chance right there. We still got him in a third down, though. It's third and two. So we'll see what type of set they're coming, coming out single back. I mean, I'm thinking this is probably going to be a run. We're going to play it as such and probably have uh, Poyer here. He's manned up on Kittle, which kind of scares me. But we're just going to, yeah, I should have done that. And of course, it's, I swear Madden knows literally, if you're on all Madden anyways, literally what you're thinking, not even what you're doing on the field, 
what you're thinking. The one guy that I had come down to play the run, who does Stafford target? He targets that player's man. You got to be freaking kidding me. The combination of Jefferson and Stafford, and again, I want you to think about like how lethal could that have been in real life? I mean, that could have been something right there. We're going to use her up on Diaby to run to Shepard. And wow, we've been bobbing through traffic. Going to get this thing down to the 27. And it's not looking good for us on this drive, boys. Crowd is mighty, mighty silent here in Thunderbirds Field. And I got Milano. Just let me guard up on Jefferson. That is literally what I need to do right now. Nice defense by DJ Reed. It's about the first good defensive play that I've seen all game. And even that, crowd's not really getting into it. I think that uh, they're a bit deflated here, if you ask me. Press coverage on the outside. We're going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to use her up on Winfield. Got to watch that tight end, 84, and also Jefferson. But no, it's Shepard. He may score. Jax Vaden, subscriber on subscriber crime. I mean, he got him, but uh, not not until the damage was already done. And I mean, really just, I can't even say too much. They are wow. coming out zero wide receivers, which I do like. But just hats off to Stafford, man. He's a dog. An absolute dog. See if he gives it to uh, Shepard up the gut. He will, and Shepard is going to score. So there you have it. Snow, uh, Snowhawks extend their lead. Game not over, but we got a lot of work to do on offense and also on defense. All right here, T-Birds. Come on. Come on. Game's not over. Don't don't feel defeated, even though you probably are. Quick RPO action here to Mike Oxmo. I needed a block there from Olave, and that could have been a massive play. But I'll settle for a gain of nine. Jordan Love not having the best game by... Jordan Love standards, and, you know, we're almost in a position where with the deficit and the clock where it is, we're, we are almost forced to be one-dimensional. I mean, not saying that we, uh, you know, we can't run, but we're going to have to really pick up some chunk plays and really pick them up fast because time is definitely not on our side, although Tubby making me eat my words there as he's now at six for 50. I wish I would see some uh, Chris Olave press action. Haven't seen that too much if at all in this game and there's a nice catch from Waller who's still going can Waller juke a man I gotta be careful another fumble here and that is <laughs> that'll pretty much seal the deal so I gotta be careful trying to fight for these extra yards we'll try RPO again coach is calling it and maybe if I see Zay Jones ooh, you know what I do see though I think that we have to go ahead and at least entertain the idea of uh, streaking Chris Olave. He's getting pressed. We haven't seen that too much. And this actually could be the play that we needed. Thank you, Chris. Do you have the speed? Okay. I wish I would see some uh, Chris Olave press action. We ain't out of it yet, my friends, because your boys got the 99 play wreck. And Chris Olave really making up for that early uh, interception. And that keeps this within reach. And really, it just comes down to our defense and you know we almost had a great great play there with that fumble of course it got overturned but we gotta find a way to limit the damage between stafford justin jefferson george kittle and also running back justin shepherd as well yes pass shade inside use leonard floyd as an extra defender and watch justin jefferson out there because he is usually the guy that stafford goes to although a throwaway this may be the first time that we see Jamie Gill in the Scottish Hammer. And don't count us out yet, guys. We have a we have a habit of doing this. Second half collapses on both sides. We seem to do them a lot. But also, it seems like when we get down big in the first half, a lot of times we do fight and claw our way back in the second half. Hoping that's the case today. But uh, Tubby McDouble and the boys still got a lot of work to do. Let's see if we can go get it done. Seems like a good time for play action. Maybe get Waller open in the middle of the field. That would be nice, although I don't really like it, and we're just going to have to take the hit and take the sack. Unfortunately, I did not see anybody getting open. They had the outside covered up pretty well, so there was no running lanes for Jordan Love. So that one, uh, that just had disaster written all over it. And I don't actually hate, well, I was going to say uh, the draw play to Tubby. But we got double press on the outside, single high safety, got to be aggressive, and this is our shot to hopefully get Olave, come on, he catches it again, and he may even outrun cornerback Mason Smith, who is just having a rough, rough game, I'm sorry if you're watching this, brother, that's a couple times you've been cooked now, and we are right back in this thing, back-to-back -back scores for the Thunderbirds, you'll love to see it. Back-to-back -back, uh, press-beating plays by Chris Olave. 
Our defense looking like they figured out how to play football now, which is much appreciated, by the way. And we got this thing now down to a three-point game. Justin Shepard, he's been, uh, I mean, he's having a decent game. Two touchdowns, that's awesome. I feel like maybe even a bit underutilized. I mean, 13 carries is, I guess that's standard for this point in the game. So I don't even really know what I'm saying. Um, I feel like we haven't called his name a lot, I guess is what I'm really saying. But there's Matt Milano. I mean, arguably, I may even just say our defensive MVP. Five tackles, a sack, a forced fumble, just doing it all and really uh, keeping us alive in this one. And we now got them behind the sticks. However, Jax Vaden, I need you to play man, co uh, yeah, man coverage on Justin Jefferson there, please. It's going to be a shepherd run. Somebody get to him. Jax Vaden actually leaves his coverage duty to come back and make a first down saving tackle that is six tackles now for jacks well done i mean pressure up the gut that seems like the best idea to me it's gonna be a shepherd handoff and he's gonna get it isn't he yeah wow ice in the veins thought that we maybe could get somebody in the backfield there but nice uh first down conversion for shepherd who's getting into it pretty hardcore with antoine winfield out there man we got justin jefferson alone and on an island out there on the outside i do not like that jacks i need you to oh he just, I took my hand off the turbo button. Jax, that was not on you, brother. I should have just, I was afraid that Justin was going to, like, cut back and juke me. Is really what I was, was thinking about. I got to remember he's a power back, so really just got to take those good angles of pursuit. But we are in store for a fun, fun fourth quarter, which I feel like we always are in this series, man. This series has definitely caused me to up my blood pressure medication. I'm actually, it, it, it well, no, it hasn't. I'm just joking. Fresh set of downs here. Ball is on the 22, and Stafford is probably... Again, good defense by Perryman, but put your hands up. Nobody's putting their hands up in this game. Put your hands up. Make a play on the ball. Do whatever you got to do, but just do something. And here, surely they can't guard Matt Milano and the other guy. It's Kittle just putting me on skates. Oh, I had a chance to get him there on the RPO, and he just put me on skates. We're not playing in Anchorage. We're playing in Toronto. I guess both uh, both areas there could be Anchorage, you know, Alaska, Toronto, Canada. Skates applicable in both areas, I guess, is what? <laughs> what I'm going with there, but that was really a drive that we needed. By his grace, by his grace. To get them off the field and upended by Jay Monstro. Holding them to a field goal here is so, so important because that will keep us in this game. A touchdown is going to make it very difficult with the amount of time left. So we really, really need that outcome to happen. Oh, and I don't like that Justin Jefferson press on the outside. Please be a run play. It is going to be a run play and we're there to meet him. Okay. Justin Shepard closing in on the century mark. So that's good for him. Antoine Winfield with six tackles. Do we go pressure here, though? You know, I think the answer is yes. And maybe cancel it on one of the guys, possibly. Uh, eh, we're going to go ahead and do it anyways. And how do we allow that to happen? I mean, there was a bunch on the left side. The bodies are, you know, sure, sure to be entangled. A lot of traffic there. But yeah, I mean, been saying it all game. Nothing's changed. The Justin Jefferson, Matthew Stafford combination is lethal. And this is back-to-back -back weeks. I think that we allowed the Aviators to put up 38 too. So defense, a lot of questions that they need to answer. Game is still not over, but we're down by 10. Our defense can't seem to get a stop. And we, I mean, the only thing, <laughs> they're letting Chris Olave beat us, uh, beat him in press. So if I see that again, the first thing I'm going to. Second and one, perfect time for a play action shot. So just show me something. Waller's there and a beautiful pass from Love. And Waller has the speed. Oh man, this offense is coming alive here in the second half. Wish I could say the same for our defense. Unfortunately, I cannot. That is good though. Quick strike plays we definitely need. And I'm not even opposed to going away from the ground now. Darren Waller also over 100 yards, which doesn't happen too often in this series. We can now afford to go to the run a little bit. Can't really entertain it too much. And Tubby just doesn't really have the change of direction. But still a decent gain of five. Come out single back here with a, a little play action. I don't like any of these. So we're going to go to Tubby. Never really used him in the passing game too much. 
But that one was good as it does result in a first down. And if nothing else, man, just give our defense, give our defense a chance. Give them a chance to redeem themselves. I know that they haven't really been playing great in this game, but give them one chance to redeem themselves. If our defense can, if we can score here, I mean, that's, <laughs> that's the first thing we got to do. We can score here and our defense can redeem themselves, which Tubby, ooh, very close. If our defense can redeem themselves and give our offense one more chance to take the lead, I feel very, very good about this one. You know what? I'm calling my own play here. I don't like to do it too often. No, I did it a little bit in the last game, but it's got to be a strict uh, stick to Chris Olave here for his third touchdown. Give me the cookies. He caught it. Diving catch. All right. So, man, oh, man, might need to call up the doc and get the dosage of the blood pressure medication upped. It's going to be a three-point game if I can drill this. And if our defense, don't worry about what's happened the whole rest of the game. Look at this as a brand new game. We got four and a half left. If we can stop them, chance to tie or take the lead. I'll feel very confident about that. All we have to do is get it the frick done. Wouldn't be surprised if this is a uh, run heavy offense now all of a sudden. I know it hasn't been for most of the game. It's going to be Shepard and we are definitely clogging the lanes for Shepard. That is Silas Vaden, the subscriber, dropping him for no gain, and although Shepard does have some some nice uh, you know chunk plays and some nice bursts out there, all in all, we're doing a good job. And I think right now we just have to play really good, solid zone coverage. We're playing off on the receivers, which kind of scares me a little bit. So maybe we're going to have uh, Leonard Floyd drop back here and please get Kittle off the field. It's third and inches. I mean, we have, oh, uh, they're coming out empty at that too. We got to get out of this, man. We had our 4-3 defense out there. I did not like that one bit. All right, now single back, so I feel a little bit better about that. We need Antoine Winfield. Just come up here and play the line, brother. Come on, get a good push. Get a good push. Get a good push. It's enough. It's enough. We had pressure on Stafford, and surely they'll punt the ball. Got to watch the fake, though, but this is our chance, man. Come on. Defense did their job. It wasn't the prettiest. See if Jamie Gillen punts it. He will. It wasn't the prettiest. It got the job done. Our offense has been on fire all game, and all we got to do, we got three and a half minutes to march down here, take the lead, and get out of Thunderbirds Field with, a, I would say, an upset. Start things off, screen pass to Hunt. Just do not take a sack, Jordan Love, please. That's good. That's exactly what I wanted. Kareem has some moves. Gain of seven. I will certainly take it. Playbook is wide open here, and as a matter of fact, we really don't even want to score. Yeah, I like coaches saying draw. I like that a lot. Uh, and they only got three down linemen, too. So this is good. Not going to audible it. I see the press on Olave. I don't care about that whatsoever. Just need Tubby to pick this up, which, oh, he got stonewalled, but fought forward. Good job, Tubby. Getting the ball down to the 40. Two-minute warning is looming. We're going to come out uh, with some meshes. It's been pretty much Waller all day, but it's going to be Mike Oxmall on that one. And Mike Oxmall does not fumble. Jordan Love now approaching 400 yards. And... All we need to do really is get in the field goal range. Obviously, I'm not playing for the tie. I'm playing for the win. But I'm just saying, worst case scenario, we got the best kicker in the league, Justin Tucker. But definitely going to be searching for the end zone on this one for sure. Time is ticking. I kind of like Olave quick, depending on what the linebacker does. Actually, I do not. Got to get that out to Darren Waller, who is just having such a clutch game. And we are in field goal range now. Jordan Love goes over 400 yards. Got to think about using our timeouts here pretty quick, but don't have to burn them quite yet. I'm probably looking for Kareem Hunt on the Texas route. That's going to be my first read anyways. Bullet pass from Love and Kareem Hunt hangs on. Don't need to call a timeout yet because we want that clock to go away as much as humanly possible. Sweaty palms time, sweaty palms time. 30 seconds to go here. We're going draw play to Tubby. I know it seems crazy to run in this situation, but that's why you do it. And I mean, we're going to call a timeout with about 15 seconds left. RPO, show me Mike Oxmall out there, and we're going to at least give him a shot. Mike Oxmall breaks a tackle, and he's in. Ah! Oh, he was stopped short. Mike Oxmall, at Rams fan in the comments. He was stopped short. Look at that. 
Was that, oh, I was going to say, was that Mason Smith again? No, it wasn't. Oh, man, what a game. Can we hold on for 11 seconds? If we, if we end up winning this game, oh, my God. Extra point is up and good. Nothing crazy. No P.I. They got to have a touchdown to win. Let's freaking get it. Just don't get beat deep. That's the only thing. Just don't get beat deep. 11 seconds is a lot of time for Matt Stafford. I'm cool with that. They got and Justin Shepard better go down. I mean, all they could do now is really just bomb the Hail Mary. No freaking P.I. guys. No P.I. That is all I'm asking. Do not let something crazy happen here. I will be just, uh, I mean, that's not going to get it done, Matt. What are you doing? Oh, I've been complimenting you all. Get Why? You got to heave it up to the end zone. And we pull, uh, we pull out the upset of the century, man. We were just getting absolutely molly whopped in that first half. And we came back. Our defense didn't look pretty at times, but they did show up when needed. Damon Sanders and Dan Campbell out there talking. But 42 to 38, my heart cannot take these close games that we're seeing week after week. And how's about Jordan Love? 438 yards, six touchdowns, that one pick. So the touchdown interception ratio is going to improve. He leads the league SFL in passing yards, by the way. Matt Stafford with 310, 2 and 0. And then rushing, Justin Shepard did do a good job. 20 for 94, 4.7 yards per carry, those two TDs. Tubby had 11 for 75, good yards per carry average. And Kareem Hunt only had one yard, but uh, it sure was a good one. I mean, offensively, just so much here. Chris Olave, 155 yards, three touchdowns. Way to erase that fumble early on from his memory. And then Darren Waller, quite possibly the best game of his career here in Toronto. George Kittle played great. Parker Newberry played great. Justin Jefferson thought he even played better than that but apparently not st james had a big touchdown two for 36 and then mike oxmall the biggest touchdown of the game sealing the victory for us in the final 10 plus seconds of the game and then defensively jacks vaden 14 tackles all all over the field where's our subscribers at mason smith he had six tackles but he did get cooked quite a bit in that one i'm not gonna lie and uh, Miles Garrett had a sack and a half. Silas Vaden, a big TFL, two total tackles there as well. And then uh, Jay Mongstro had a TFL. So just tons of players across the board making plays. That game was exciting. But time to check out the rest of the action from all of our subscriber players around the SFL in week four. Ow, the Redwoods actually do get the big upset win against the San Antonio Voyagers, who were previously 3-0, and quarterback Lionel Moore, only 167 yards and two touchdowns, but apparently that was enough to get the job done, and uh, Christian McCaffrey, too. Wow, he was all over the place. Mac Hayward, 13 for 21. The problem is when you play with Lamar Jackson, he's going to poach away a lot of those runs, and also Austin Gutierrez had 3 for 13 as well and then cannot forget about our subscriber free safety here flash parker he had four tackles and also a pass deflection in there too dublin shamrocks climbing back into the wind column they made some type of heck of a run last season and looking like they're trying to do the same here in this season jesse buzo jr the subscriber player two touchdowns 274 yards did have one interception but uh looks like his subscriber mate uku tree wrap five receptions for 87 yards that is awesome to see and then of course on the defensive side of the ball we have ty royal smoochie wallace who had two tackles and also a pass deflection too so nice win by the dubs tokyo golden eagles knock off the canton condors so condors kind of uh in a slump they kind of were in a slump last season as well and i am just i have no idea i, I have reordered the depth chart for Braden keys every single week here in the sfl and for whatever reason he just continues to not have yards so i am at hopefully madden 25 they kind of clean some stuff up with uh the depth chart but mike collins the strong safety had seven tackles and also we got mr eli sakowitz here he had four tackles 14 13 game wow that was a uh, definitely a def defensive minded game between the albuquerque armadillos and the columbus caps and uh anthony richardson 
outdueling Gardner Minshew there. And also subscriber wide receiver Jaden Taylor, nine receptions for 126 yards. Wow. Bjorn Jeffrey also got in there three for 38. So nice to see those guys get involved. And then we got our subscriber linebacker here, Arturo X Esquivel. Four tackles and also a big, big sack lunch in there to boot. Montreal Monarchs drop another one. After that game that they played us, they've they've kind of been on a bit of a losing streak as well. And it was a CJ Stroud, a Leo McGlizzy battle here. Leo being our subscriber QB on this team. He went 210, one and one. So not the the best game in the world. And then uh, we got to take a look here at wide receiver Nick Stoyer. He had four for 35, but the Monarchs unfortunately suffer the L in this one. St. Louis Bulls continue. They're undefeated. 4-0 on the season, I do believe. And they are led by Kirk Cousins, who also got a pretty big contract this offseason. But they were also led by this man, Austin Kringle, subscriber, running back out of Buffalo. He had two for 66. Not the best yards per carry, but two glorious touchdowns to help his Bulls propel themselves to a victory. Wow, the Lumberjacks do come back and beat the Orbits. Another defensive-minded game. They were losing that one. And Michael Yakin led them to victory with his 169 yards and one touchdown. And then we got uh, subscriber running backs on both teams. Johnny Waters had a good one, 18 for 76. Darian Wolcott, 12 for 34. No touchdowns between those two. And all these defensive-minded games, man. I guess I guess all the offense is getting done in our games that we play. Sacramento Sentinels down the Honolulu Dragons, 26 to 20. And we got uh, subscriber QB. He's in the top five in passing yards and probably not touchdowns now, but maybe. Rocky DiBernardo, 251 yards, outdueled Brock Purdy. So uh, that looks like it was a pretty fun and exciting game. And then we got to look over here at James Briner for the Dragons. Wow, six for 82, no touchdowns. They could have used one to get the lead, the victory over the Sentinels, but still nice to see. And Devontae Adams too, by the way. Rocky DiBernardo's favorite target. But nice work there from James Briner. And then we got our subscriber middle linebacker, Zachary Nolan. He had six tackles, no sacks, forced fumbles, or INTs. Another team that's kind of on a bit of a losing streak. I believe they're one and uh, four now. And we get a look at their subscriber quarterback. Just added a couple episodes ago, C. Tucka. D had 229 yards, one touchdown, and a pick. But unfortunately, Trevor Lawrence was just a little bit better as the Elks do eke out a victory. Portland Steamers, who they might be three and one or, well, I guess four. I don't know. They're doing good is all I know. And I know that because they have Derrick Henry on the team. He had two touchdowns. But Ayamal Musa, very good running back. He's up there amongst the tops as well. 20 for 77, so fell off a bit in that one, unfortunately. And getting a look at the defensive side of the ball here, we got two subscribers. On the Wizards, we have Michael Briner, only three tackles. He had tons of uh, TFLs last season, not really adding them up too much so far in season number two. And then C-Ben, only with two tackles. So not, you know, not the best defensive showing for the Wizards. And that may be why they lost that one. Salt Lake City Bisons get the win over the, I believe the Tigers were, win, uh, you know, lossless as well. I think they were perfect prior to this game. And the Bisons were led by... Mason Buchanan, who we know the T-Birds have history with that team. Mason played well, 238, three touchdowns, those two picks. Got to clean that up a little bit, but apparently it wasn't enough for, you know, for the for the loss to result. And then we look at King Love, the subscriber corner, five tackles. The subscriber defenders not really getting picks or, or you know, too much like that. Nick Bolton got two of them, but would definitely like to see some more picks, sacks, and uh, forced fumbles from our subscriber defenders. That would be nice. Ooh, the Nighthawks. They were 0-3. They get the win over our uh, the other uh, division rival, Melbourne Dreadnoughts, who we are yet to play. And it was a battle between Derek Daragosa and Jaden Hayes. I mean, Jaden Hayes played great. You're watching Jaden, 289, four touchdowns and a pick. Derek Daragosa, 233, two touchdowns and a pick as well. And we get a look at the receivers for the Dreadnoughts. I don't know how they lost this game. They... They play great. I mean, Alexander Kleblec, 114 for a touchdown. Yeezy Fuentes, 7 for 90 for three touchdowns. I mean, you got to be kidding me. And Caleb Hayes went three for 39. And that one was, looks like it was a fun one as the Brooklyn Nighthawks eke out a one-point victory against Melbourne. And of course, they give me the Aviators and the Oilers, like freaking 10 subscribers to go through on this one. A battle of the subscribers, but the Aviators do pull out 
the victory. And I'll tell you what, we're going to go team by team here. And I got my Discord pulled up because there's way too many subscribers to remember on these teams. But Cameron Moore, 218 and interception. Um, but, you know, apparently it was enough for them to get the victory. It might not have been the prettiest, but it was enough. And looking at receiving here, no receivers. So we'll move on to... Halfbacks, Aiden Leslie, 16 for 69 and a touchdown. And also Nico Petey, 7 for 18. But nice to see both subscriber running backs get a touchdown in that one. Defensively, Dior Love had two tackles, also two pass deflections as well. So that was pretty cool to see. And then Not Oreo, who just absolutely lit us up in our game. He had two tackles, but no sacks or anything like that. And moving on to the Oilers here, we got one defender. That would be Thomas Francisco, who had only two tackles, so not the best showing there for him. Unfortunately, Lucas Thomas went. And that's also funny, too. Lucas, Oil, Oilers. I just realized that. But 293, one touchdown and two picks. And then we got a couple of receivers here. Kyrie Brooks, 7 for 76. And Floyd Butler, 4 for 75. Subscribers showed out for both teams on this one. But Aviators do get the three-point victory. And then River Hogs and Black Knights, no subscribers on those teams. So that is your week four recap as we move on here to week five. We are back at 500, but so are the Dreadnoughts. So are the Lumberjacks. We got a nice weekly award from Jordan Love. Well-deserved, I would say, six passing touchdowns. Man, that game was crazy. But exciting stuff, guys. That is going to do it for me tonight. But as always, I appreciate you stopping by. I will catch you on the next one. Until then, peace.